Good morning and welcome back to Mosaic. We're in the middle of a wonderful conversation in honor of November as Jewish Book Month about writing and reading and the nature of communication in today's world. I want to let you know that the Jewish Community Library's book club this year is called One Bay, One Book. That's the name of the program for the year. And the book that they are going to be reading and discussing for the entire year is a book called A Guide for the Perplexed by Dara Horn. A Guide for the Perplexed by Dara Horn and is part of the One Bay, One Book Club with the Jewish Community Library here in San Francisco. We're joined now by Jason K. Friedman, who is a short story writer whose book is um, just now published. It's called Fire Year. And also by Joan Gelfand, who is the poetry editor for The J, which is our local Jewish community weekly newspaper and also herself a poet. Two of her poetry books are A Dreamer's Guide to Cities and Streams, as well as... Here and Abroad is, sh is short fiction. Here and Abroad, short fiction. Welcome, Joan and, ha and Jason. Um, so, you're writers, you're artists, you um, utilize your imagination in this way. You're a poet, you're a short story writer, and also a writer of fiction. Wh I'm, I'm just curious to know, what is the difference, you think, between writing poetry and writing short stories? Um, I, you know, I don't write poetry, but I, I admire poets so much. Um, I, I mean, I, this sounds flip, but I, I actually mean this quite sincerely. I, I think that a, you know, a person who writes um, novels or short stories is maybe a person who, who can't be a poet, who can't say it in as um, short a space as a poet. I mean, I think the huh. poetry is kind of a distillation of maybe what we all want to say, but kind of can't say. So um, I, I have huge admiration for, for poets. So. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. I wish uh, all the culture felt <laughs> that way. Uh, for one thing, uh, you know, it's a matter of time. Uh, you can write uh, a poem in uh, much less time than a story or a novel, ah. but people uh, really don't realize that uh, good poems are revised over and over and over. And when a poet has a collection come out, even though it may only be 78 pages instead of 780 pages, those pages have been worked and reworked. Um, it, it's, it's a labor of love, is what it is. And uh, it's, it's hard work. And, and just to ask a very basic question, because I know a lot of people out there sort of think about this. Certainly there are other writers listening to us talk and, and people who are readers and just admire that and enjoy it. Why, why do you write? Should I start? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I thought about that question. And, um, you know, when you start to write, I started to write very young. I started to write when I was in my teens. You write because you get encouraged. I mean, you, you, you put a toe in the water and you say, here's a poem. And you present it to someone and they're touched. And you go, oh, well, that's interesting. And so you write again. And then you do a reading, and people come up to you and say that they cried. And then you go, well, oh, that's interesting. And so, you, you know, I, I went to, for my master's, and, you know, my teachers encouraged me. You know, oh, this, this piece could be a, a film. You know, you, you get that kind of um, support, and that's really what keeps you going, especially over years. Inter and Jason? Well, I write to um, understand something. So, I mean, the classic um, example would be, you know, something that's bothering me. I mean, I think this is why people write songs, and um, it's, it's just, it's an urge to, to, to write something that's, um, you know, to, to understand what's bothering you. But, but I also try to understand things that aren't immediately bothering me. Um, I, um, I've taught creative writing, and I, I always tell my students, um, you know, uh, write what you want to know, which is sort of a little variation on the actual classic thing you're supposed to say, like, write what you do know. Um, to me, if it's something that I want to know, that's going to, that um, drive to understand is going to be um, reflected in the drive of the story, right? That's going to be the narrative impulse to understand something. So I write about things that I really don't <laughs> have immediate knowledge of at all. Um, so, um, but there are things Actually, I want to know about. That's a wonderful <laughs> segue. Can I, can I say something about political poetry? Because um, we talk a lot in the community about political poetry. And there's a brilliant essay by Stephen Dunn, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning poet. And he says, you can write political poetry, but unless you, unless you don't know what the ending is, it's not going to work. Yeah. Same thing. 
there has mm. to be an element of surprise. Definitely. That if you sit down and you know where you're going and what you want to say, then um, it's going to come out didactic yeah. and, po and polemical yeah. and, th and really I, beautiful uh, tie-in to that. Yeah, I, I would agree completely. Um, not talking just about political writing, but just sort of knowing what the ending is. Um, we all, all writers have the experience of people saying, that makes such a great story. And so um, sometimes one is tempted to write that great story, but you already know the ending of that story. It actually doesn't make such a great story because you've told the story. You know how it's going to end. It's, it's a joke. You've made the joke. Um, so to sort of get s to have a sort of basic idea of where I'm going without knowing how it's going to end up, being surprised. That's like the most wonderful feeling. Actually, the most wonderful feeling for me when I'm writing is. Um, when I get to the point where I, where I realize I don't have to go any farther. And that, that, when, it, when that moment takes me by surprise, that's the best, like, wow, I can stop. We're going to take, we're so. going to stop really quick yeah. right now, actually, and take a break, and we're going to show your books on the screen as we go to the break, and please come back in just a moment here on Mosaic. Welcome back to Mosaic. I'm Rabbi Eric Weiss and honored to be your host. We're talking with Joan Gelfand and also with Jason K. Friedman about literature and poetry and writing and their books. Welcome back, Thanks. Joan and Jason. You know, it occurred to me that, um, just to make a general statement, most people begin writing by writing in a diary, or maybe they get an essay assignment from their school, and that in some ways I wonder if writing at, at a certain point um, makes a shift and essentially a book or a book of poetry ends up being something like a public diary that then is kind of given to the world. The diary is typically thought of as something that's kept secret for oneself, but then once you um, show somebody and get encouragement, then you actually move in into a little bit of the public sphere. And I'm just wondering sort of what you think of that for your own particular writing process or as you developed as writers. Is that does that ring a bell in it any really way does. to you? It really does. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we learn when we're in writers groups or MFA programs or wherever we learn how to be professional writers is there is writing that's private. And that's the diary writing uh, that is healing and that is important and that helps people to know themselves. But when you put your work out in public, you start to want to have some universality. Uh -huh. Okay, so there has to be some uh, epiphany, some some truth yeah. moment that's bigger yeah. than your own personal than your own personal your own, experience. Uh -huh. yeah. So only because we have just a little bit of time left, let's Joan talk about your couple of books. We'll ask Jason to talk about his n recently new published book as well. So we. We have people hear a little bit about them. And don't tell us too much, just tell us enough to make us want to go get them. Oh, yeah, my new book is um, called Fire Year. Um, it's a uh, book of short stories. Um, it, um, it won a prize, the Mary McCarthy Prize, and the prize was this publication. And um, it's um, stories that are um, in inspired by um, my um, growing up in a southern Jewish community in um, Savannah. Um, so uh, characters and stories that I have not experienced directly, but that I have um, kind of um, I've, I've known or grown up with or, or heard. Um, it, I think probably asking a writer like what his book about is probably not uh, the greatest idea, but my publisher calls them um, outsiders' tales. Um, so it's about um, uh, characters who maybe have a kind of complicated relationship with their communities they come from, whether it's the Jewish community or southern community or gay community. Um, but um, to me, it's a um, you know, the, the, the subject matter is pretty varied. I have a couple of stories about um, con men. I have a story about um, solving an art mystery. And a couple more um, kind of, um, kind of coming-of-age coming type stories. Oh, great. So, Called Fire Year. Yeah. Fire Year. Yeah. And Joan, in um, just a couple of sentences. 
Uh, a dreamer's guide to cities and streams. There are uh, there's a section on environmental. Uh, poetry, uh, my urge to talk about what's happening to our earth. Um, there's a section on what it's like to live in the city and also be a, a nature person. Um, and there's a lot of poems about San Francisco. Wonderful. Yeah. We have just one minute left, so I'm going to ask each of you a different question. Just a quick one-word one, one answer to a really big question. So, Michael. Um, excuse me, Jason. Okay. <laughs> we had Michael in the first two segments. Jason, I know who you are. Your book is wonderful, Fire Year. So, um, in, a, in a world that is in so need of, of um, is it broken, what heals? Oh, listening. Listening. Yeah. And what, was one, what would be one thing you would change in the world, Joan, if you could? Political infighting. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, please. Go to a bookstore, buy a book, get on the computer, buy a book, go to your local library, take a book out, enjoy reading, and if you write, keep on writing. Thank you so much for joining us here on Mosaic.